So I think it would go back to the first day I ever came to this country. My mom and dad immigrated to the United States from India, and slowly they brought my siblings and I one by one. And I was the last to arrive in 1972. And I'll never forget stepping off the airplane um, in my dad's arms. And I look into the airport and I see these sea of people in the airport. And I'm thinking to myself, wow, I love this country already. Look at all these people waiting for my dad and I to come and arrive to the United States of America. And then I got really jazzed when I thought they were throwing confetti at us. I'm like, oh my gosh, I love it. Look at all this confetti all around me. Turned out it was snow and I'd never seen snow before in my entire life. And Jim, I gotta tell you, I've never stopped being excited for this great country. And fast forward, I uh, graduate from uh, civil engineering and uh, immediately upon graduating uh, with this degree, I knew I wanted to serve the public because I feel very grateful for the opportunities that have come to my family and I and just about every immigrant that comes to this great country that people from all over the world can come here and call themselves American. But I also know everyone that's living in this country, as many opportunities are offered, there's just as many people that are being left behind. So I wanted to get into public service to pay it forward because you know I'm very grateful for the opportunities. Um, and so I served as a transportation engineer at Montgomery County Department of Transportation for 25 years. And I also had the great honor and privilege of serving the people of Maryland as a Maryland State Delegate for eight years. And so here I am today, so humbled and honored to be the Democratic nominee for Lieutenant Governor of Maryland with my friend Wes Moore, Democratic nominee for governor. And transportation plays a big, big factor in everybody's lives, uh, Jim. I mean, it is an equity issue. It is an economic health issue. It is a, you know, a quality of life issue. It's an environmental issue. And it is an issue that lifts people out of poverty because people can't get to their jobs. Then guess what? They fall into the cycle of poverty. And, uh, you know, there's so many ways in which we can help people and connect our communities, connect them to the things that they need for their daily survival through transportation. Whether it's um, having public transit, building highways, building sidewalks, building bicycle facilities, making sure all our facilities are ADA compliant to address the needs of all users of the transportation network. I think every candidate that runs for public office, they want to serve the public, right? And they have their own ideas on how to make the state uh, of Maryland better. Um, so I would say, you know, our mission is a little different from our opponents. And, you know, a lot of which has to do with creating a more inclusive um, government, a government that's going to look like the people of Maryland and represent the people of Maryland. You know, Maryland is the uh, most diverse state on the East Coast. In the United States right now, there are six states that are majority minority. So there is no dominant race in those particular states. Many of them are on the West Coast, and then there's Texas, and then there's Maryland, right? And so we are proud to have this incredible diverse um, uh, you know, economy here, a diverse workforce that's here. People from all over the world come here. And we want to be able to build a very inclusive economy that looks like everybody here, that addresses the you know, skill sets of others, and that really doesn't leave others behind. That's the mission of our campaign, to leave no one behind. And I think perhaps that's how we distinguish ourselves from um, our other you know, opponent that's running in the race, is that we believe in women's right to choose. We believe in combating climate change, that climate change is real, it's urgent, and we have to address it in the most urgent fashion, that we want to be able to invest in public education, because education really is uh, one of the pillars that changes people's lives and gives them great opportunities. We want to close the racial 
wealth gap. We want to make sure that our economy is working for everyone. So, you know, those are some of the ways in which we differ from our opponent. We want to make sure on day one, if we are honored enough to be elected, that we will release the three and a half million dollars that the current governor has held back for abortion providers because women should have right to reproductive rights and health care. And of course, reproductive health care is not only abortion care, but it's also family planning and you know having access to contraceptions. So there's so much more that goes into this. Um, you know, we also want to make sure our priority is also again, as I mentioned, climate change. Right? There's so many ways in, we, in which we can address this, um, from being able to take advantage of solar and you know our wind energy and making sure that we have our government fleet that will be uh, electric vehicles um, and relying you know less on fossil fuels. We want to make sure that we create opportunities of work, wages, and wealth. So we create a diverse economy. Um, you know, we have a very educated economy here in Maryland, but not everyone wants to go to a four-year college and get a job, right? So the talent is out there, Jim. We just need to be able to harness it and give the type of jobs that these individuals can play a role in our economy. We want to create wages that they can raise a family on. There's no reason why any individual, an adult in our state, has to work three jobs in order to just keep their head above the water. And we want to create wealth for them. So that means that they have enough money that they can own a home and then they can pass on to the next generation. So this is what we're fighting on. Okay. There are so many issues that, as Wes and I have traveled across the state of Maryland, that we heard from Marylanders about addressing. But me personally, I can let you know that one of the most important things for me that's affected my life, and I would probably venture to say just about affected everyone's life in Maryland, and that is our ability to deal with mental health, right? Um, during COVID, there was too many sad stories that I heard. I've known individuals that took their own life um, because of the mental health issues they were facing, because of the isolation or maybe past trauma. And I know in my own personal life, my father suffered from bipolar disorder. Back in the 70s, people didn't talk about it. So my father really didn't know where to seek help. And he suffered tremendously as a result of that. And anyone that has lived with a loved one that suffered from mental health uh, matters you know that you also suffer and go through that similar pain. And um, when my father suffered from it, I know that he had lost his job. And when you lose your job, you lose your friends, you lose your dignity. I saw him go through this pain. And I don't want other people to go through that pain. And I think if we can bring sunlight onto the issue of mental health care, how important it is from the moment you're born till the moment you exit this world from whether you're a high, you know, student in school or you're a senior living by yourself. We need to be able to provide the services they need. So that's something that I'd really like to address.